welcome back now in this section we are going to again cover few of the surgical instruments very quickly and i am calling it as recall instruments most of the instruments here we are just revising and few with along with few new instruments for the purpose of our growing knowledge of surgical instruments right so recall instruments the first one is spencer wells hemostatic forceps this is known as spencer wells hemostatic forceps right as a what are the various uses as a hemostat or we can hold a pedicle the tissue holding hemostasis dissection holding a suture needle if the needle holder is not available and sometimes to drain an abscess with care to avoid damage to the deeper structures if the sinus the lister sinus forceps is not available right so this spencer will hemostatic forceps can be used if these spencer will hemostatic forceps are of a small sizes they are known as mosquito forceps or halstead forceps and when these spencer will hemostatic forceps are of large sizes they are known as kelly's forceps right we have already covered this mosquito and kelly's in the previous video so this is how the open spencer will hemostatic forceps looks like right focus on this end and these forceps are having locks then next is coaches forceps coaches forceps yes then these are toothed forceps with a long flat area in the distal segment and this long flat area is for crushing the tissue in between what are the various uses of this coaches forceps yes to hold tough fascia like rectus sheath during laparotomy in cases of uh, this artificial rupture of membrane we can use this coaches forceps then for crushing the stump of appendix it can be used and sometimes is yes, to hold the loop formed by umbilical tape or infant feeding tube during isolation of spermatic cord or uterine or ureter during the spermatic cord during hernia repair or uh, ureter during the ureteral lithotomy right the next instrument is the robert's artery forceps the straight one also known as straight artery we are commonly using it. this is robert's artery forceps and robert's artery forceps basically this is used for dissection purpose uh, for hemostasis in the deeper regions of abdomen the insertion of abdominal drains or intercostal drainage tubes we can use this robert's artery forceps the longer one and it can be used to pass free ties especially in the pelvic surgery the longer this robert's artery forceps means a long size straight artery forceps right then i this this focus on this instrument having two rings a lock and a curved distal part with hooks here this is known as teal's volcellum forceps right teal's volcellum forceps the steel's volcellum forceps is basically used to grasp cervical lips to see the cervix and this is also used in vaginal hysterectomy it can be used to grasp a fibroid polyp during vaginal myomectomies the important thing is it should not be used don't use this in gravity uterus if the lady is pregnant don't use this instrument why because there is a risk of tear and bleeding from the cervix okay so this volcellum forcep is only used to grasp the cervical lips in non pregnant state right when there is absence of gravity uterus no pregnancy is there then only this volcellum forcep should be used over the cervix the needle holder you have already seen this instrument the eye is there in the distal end with serrations and there is a lock here 
around 8 to 10 times magnification of force is there with the needle holder depending on this relationship of the length from this fulcrum point okay needle holder then this is a ramp place sponge holding forceps very commonly asked from the students this instrument ramp place sponge holding forcep they are having a lock and you can see in the shadow this is there is a hole so this is fenestrated the distal end and having serrations so in open condition you can see how it is look like ramp place sponge holding forceps it has ring tips with transverse serrations here you can see the ring tips with transverse serration ramp place sponge holding forceps here and what is the use of these transverse serrations it provide good grip for holding objects various uses the common uses are swabbing the operative field for disinfection for holding the sponge and swabbing the vagina then grasping the gallbladder during open cholecystectomy for applying medication to the deep seated reasons and if the some surface is oozing inside for applying pressure over the small oozing areas along with swab okay so these are the these were the uses of ramp place sponge holding forceps then these type of instrument these are basically male urethral dilators these are available in sets and they are used in dilatation of stricture urethra and sometimes to dilate urethra before cystoscopy these instruments can be used male urethral dilators nowadays this male urethral dilators the specific variety is also available through which we can pass a guide wire also okay these are the instruments the female urethral dilators so one take home message for male and female different types of urethral dilators are available but foley's catheter can be used for male as well as for females urethral dilators are different foley's catheter same so female urethral dilators again dilatation of stenosis urethra and sometimes to dilate urethra before cystoscopy these were the uses of these female urethral dilators then mesenbaum dissection scissors robert's artery forceps we have already covered i'm just revising it then tetal forceps you can see the angulated distal end and it is used to remove sterilized instruments from boilers and formalin cabinets right this distal end is used to take out the sterilized instruments and this again this tetal forcep is usually seen in the wards on dressing trolleys sometimes then Ali's forceps very common instrument and it is used as a hemostatic forceps uh, it can be used to hold the fibrous structures like rectus sheet during laparotomy and then the splayed out tips with fine serrations are there and it grips the tissue very securely so for use for basically tougher structures Halley's forceps again it is having a lock here so just to revise the instruments not having locks the Lister sinus forcep, the scissors, anything else, the Desjardin forceps and Rendall stone holding forceps for removing kidney stones. Desjardin for removing common bile duct stones. These instruments are not having any locks, right? So Alice forceps, then this is how with open distal end, Alice forceps. Then back horse towel clip back horse towel clip it can be used to lift umbilical pillar during creation of pneumoperitoneum by open method we can use during minimal access surgery to hold drapes in place most common use of this back horse towel clip right and it is it can be used to fix the cables and tubes during laparoscopic procedures 
And another alternative of this back cross towel clip is Jones cross section towel clips, right? Okay. Then Babcock's faucet. Again, just focus on the distal end, and this is the lock. It is used to handle tubular structures like appendix, the ureter, the fallopian tubes. We can use this instrument to hold these structures. And working ends hold tubular structures with minimal tension. This is the advantage of using this instrument over these tubular structures. These tubular structures so that the intraluminal effects are minimal. It is not going to damage the intraluminal part of these tubular structures. That's why this Babcock's forceps is preferred for these tubular structures. Then mosquito artery forceps. Then comes the Doyen's intestinal forceps, also known as Doyen's non-crushing intestinal clamps. Here you can see, in this A space, we can clamp the small intestine. It is used to temporarily occlude the lumen of bowel and design to occlude the lumen of bowel without damaging the gut wall. It is not going to damage the gut wall. It is just going to occlude the lumen of the bowel temporarily and blades have a space or these are lightweight with longitudinal serrations here you can see the longitudinal serrations and that's why it is going to damage it minimally this instrument is having lock for occluding the lumen of the bowel again i have already told you having three locks so we are going to apply only one for holding Similar to this one, just in uh, having opposite a uh, function, requires crushing intestinal faucet. This was Doyen's non crushing. This is Pyre's crushing intestinal faucet. That's why this is also known as crushing pyloric clamp. Right? It uses a double lever mechanism to occlude and crush the bowel lumen during resection of cut. Closes in two stages. The first lock occludes and second lock crushes the bowel. During the section, two crushing clamps are applied. This is a normal procedure. During the section, two crushing clamps are applied to ends of diseased cut. And two non-crushing clamps are applied 5 cm from crushing clamp on both ends on healthy part of the cut. Right? Rochester pin clamp, another variant of crushing intestinal clamp that is pious crushing clamp, it is used for gastric resection. Okay, so Doyen's non crushing commonly we are using in our hospital, pious crushing intestinal forceps, then Rochester pin clamp, a variant of crushing intestinal clamp used for gastric resection. Okay. This is a tongue depressor spatula used for examination in the oral cavity for depressing the tongue. And this is toothed dissecting thumb faucet. Just focus on the distal tip. This is McGannon skin hook. It is used to lift the skin in subcutaneous procedures like modified reticle mastectomy. And this instrument is held at right angles to the surface to give traction. McGannon is skin off. Then Bulldog's vascular clamp. It's a spring-loaded crossover clamp for vessels. And it stops the blood flow distal and proximal to the site of ongoing vascular repair. It has longitudinal striations along its tip, like the DBK's forceps can used in vascular surgery working ends may be long curved or straight depending on the use the type of vessel and usually the ends are covered with rubber shots to prevent damage to the vessel wall and to protect the fine striations at its tip during storage so this is bulldog's vascular clamp from here we can apply the force in this direction And this is Kule's Satinsky clamp. We have already seen this instrument. We are just 
going through few important points regarding Cooley Satinsky clamp made by Dr. Victor P. Satinsky. To clamp the these this instrument is used to clamp the vessel during repair for vascular end to side or side to side anastomosis. The section to be repaired is placed in the concavity of the clamp here. This side. Concavity of the clamp. The section to be repaired. The section, the part of the vessel that is to be repaired is placed in this concavity. And distal and proximal flow is occluded by locking the lamp. And working ends have longitudinal serrations to gently occlude the lumen without damaging it. Again, it is having a lock here. Then Thompson Walker systolithotomy forceps. You can see there is a cup shaped working end with multiple spikes in the concavity to firmly grip the stone during open systolithotomy here. Inside it, there are multiple spikes there. And during open systolithotomy, systolithotomy means removal of stones from the urinary bladder. This instrument is used. Thompson Walker systolithotomy fossils. And here you can see one ring is open here. This, this proximal end. One ring is open and other ring is complete. This one is complete and this one is open. So this is Thompson Walker systolithotomy forceps used to remove stones from urinary bladder. Then Alexander Farabube's periosteal elevator. It is used to elevate the periosteum from underlying bone in orthopedic surgery. And sometimes obviously in uh, kidney exposure also. It has a sharp edge which peels off the periosteum with attached muscles and ligaments from bone. Edged and disconnected to a shaft with a grip. And it is used in renal surgeries where ligament and muscles are shaped off the ribs during flank approach. Known as Alexander Farabube's periosteal elevator. Then after elevating this during renal exposure, this is another important instrument, Doyen Rib Respiratory. Doyen Rib Respiratory. It is used to denude rib of all the muscular panuretic attachment. All the muscles, the other ligament attached to the ribs we are going to remove with the help of this respiratory known as joint rib respiratory. There are two different sites are available for one from right of one for right side and another one is for left side. There is a tubular shaft coiling and tapering at its end into a sharp marginated blade and a handle to which shaft is attached. This one is used for denuding the rib. Right, one is for right and one is for left. Respiratory is placed on the level surface, and a side to which the coil is open is the side where it is applied from inferior edge onwards, encircling the whole rib, dividing it off its periosteum. Right, so one is for right, another one is for left. Down rib respiratory and rib cutter. We have a uh, Denuded the rib from all the attachments and we want to cut the rib then we are going to use this rib cutter and if there is bleed after cutting the bone we can apply the bone wax right for stopping the bleed then rib is cut during flank approach if kidney exposure is compromised then when we want to better expose the kidney then we will have to cut the rib in that case, this rib cutter is used. Then the nerve hook. The nerve hook is basically used to hook and raise nerve during various procedures like lumbar sympathectomy or sometimes transposition of all nerve. nerve. And usually in, in any dissection of any nerve, this nerve hook can be used and this is done by this distal end. And this is the vein hook. Dissecting for used for dissecting and lifting the veins during abulsion of perforators or localized dilated veins. This one, with the help of this instrument, we can lift the veins. So that is all in this uh, video. See, bye bye. Thank you.